Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Oh, cool. We're hanging out backstage at a game show today. On this game show, they survey people on the street and contestants have to make guesses about what people said. Sounds like fun. Oh, real quick. A survey is when a bunch of people are asked a question and then data is collected. Such as, what's your favorite school subject? Math, of course. Or do you prefer cats or dogs? Today we're going to check out some of the questions and answers. The game show asked 15 pet owners, what kind of pet do you have? Well, this picture graph shows the responses. Cool. It looks like this picture graph has everything it needs. It has a title, which tells us what the graph is about. In this case, the graph is about pets people own. It has a key, which tells us what the symbol in the picture graph means. In this case, the key tells us that one happy face symbol represents one pet that a person owns. And it has a label for each category. Fish, bird, dog, and cat. And it has the symbols neatly organized in each row. Great! Let's answer some questions about this data. Which is the most common pet? Well, this question is asking which pet is owned by the most number of people surveyed. You can see that the dog has the most number of happy faces, so the dog is the most common pet. How many pet owners have four-legged pets? We'll have to do some thinking about this one. Fish don't have any legs. And birds only have two legs. But both cats and dogs have four legs, so we'll need to add to find the answer. Five dogs plus four cats equals nine four-legged animals. So, nine people own a four-legged animal. Nice work! Now here's another survey question. People were asked, what was the last type of vacation you took? Let's take a look at the responses. First, I want to ask you how many people were surveyed? Well, here, each picture of an airplane represents one person's answer. And if we add up all the answers, we'd have the total number of people who responded. Eight people answered city. Five people answered countryside. Seven people answered theme park. And five people answered camping. So we need to add eight plus five plus seven plus five. Now let's try some of our addition strategies. The first thing that I notice is the two fives. Well, five plus five is a 10. So these two fives will add up to 10. Next, we're left with eight and seven. Well, that makes me think of the doubles fact, seven plus seven equals 14. So seven plus eight would be just one more, 15. Great. The doubles plus one strategy is so useful. Now, all we have to do is add up 15 and 10. We know that 10 more than 15 is like skip counting by tens, starting at 15. So 15 plus 10 is 25. Nice work. 25 people in all were asked about their most recent vacation. Now let's dig into the data. We can see from the picture graph that more people recently went to a city on vacation than to the countryside. But how many more people went to a city than the countryside? This is a compare problem, and we will need to subtract. Eight people went to a city, and five people went to the countryside. So, subtract five from eight. Eight minus five is three. Three more people went on a city vacation than to the countryside. Ooh, great job figuring that out. Now it's time for the next survey question. Fifteen teachers were surveyed and asked, what is your favorite subject to teach? And here is how the teachers responded. Neat. Let's switch to bar graphs. What do you notice on the sides of the graph? You'll find our axis labels. The words going up that say number of teachers are vertical axis label. Remember, vertical means going up and down. The subjects label is our horizontal axis label, which goes side to side. Now on this bar graph, we can see the four different responses. History, English, science, and math. Now I'm going to ask you a tough question. 
How many more teachers prefer teaching history or English than math or science? This is a comparison problem, yes, but it's multi-step. First, we need to find the number of teachers who prefer history and English by adding. Then we need to find the number of teachers who prefer science and math by adding, and then we will subtract. So first, let's add the number of teachers who prefer history and English. Four plus four equals eight. So eight teachers prefer history or English. Next, add the number of teachers who prefer science or math. Two plus five is seven. So seven teachers prefer science or math. Finally, we're gonna subtract the number of teachers who prefer science or math from the number of teachers who prefer history or English. Eight minus seven is one. So only one more teacher prefers teaching history or English over science or math. Nice work. What do you say we check out one more thing on the survey? 30 people were asked if they could win tickets to any major sporting game, what sport would they want to go to? Football, baseball, basketball, or ice hockey. And here are the results. Take a careful look at this graph and see if you can tell me which sporting event was the most popular answer. Well, we can see without looking at any numbers that football was the most popular answer since it is the longest bar. And which sporting event was the least popular answer? We can also see without looking at any numbers that ice hockey was the least popular answer since it is the shortest bar. Now, how many more people chose football than ice hockey? For this, we're gonna need to read the bars. Football is easy to read since it's right next to the numbers. 10 people chose football. For ice hockey, we need to look where the bar ends and carefully see what number it lines up with. Only four people chose ice hockey. Now since we're comparing the number of people who chose football over ice hockey, we need to subtract. We have a 10 fact that four plus six is 10. So this means that 10 minus four is six. And six more people chose football than hockey. Nice work. Today, you answered questions about picture and bar graphs. Sometimes you compared two or more categories, and sometimes you added up two or more categories. Just like in regular word problems, it's important to look at the graph and read the question carefully to figure out what numbers you need to add or subtract. And with that, see you later, mighty friend.